Hello everybody, I'm Scott Neuschwender with Legacy Sports International. Today we're going to do a quick video on our new Citadel KTAC or ATA 12 gauge shotgun. With a lot of new uh, first time purchasers to the gun buying market uh, and a new model in this KTAC, we have been getting a lot of phone calls and emails at the factory on how do I go about cleaning it? How do I go about shooting or breaking it in properly? So today I just want to do a quick video going over the shotgun and a brief teardown of what you should do initially upon getting it out of the box and putting it all back together again. Uh, it is a 20 inch barrel with a three inch chamber. So it is capable of shooting both two and three quarter inch shells and three inch shells. We do recommend a minimum of 1300 feet per second loads to initially cycle and break in the shotgun. Probably after about 50 rounds or so, you're gonna find that some lower velocity, 1200 feet per second or so, should cycle properly through that. It does come with three extended choke tubes. There is a modified choke tube in the barrel once you pull it out of the box. And then inside the choke tube case, there is going to be a cylinder bore and a full choke extra additional uh, extra choke tube and wrench to uh, go ahead and remove and insert the new tube so let's just go with the takedown right out of the gate with any new shotgun any new firearm there is going to be a tremendous amount of oil on these things from the factory just because we don't know how long they may be sitting in a particular environment we don't want rust or corrosion to start happening so they put a very liberal amount of oil on these things to make sure that doesn't happen so what we're going to do is to start with removing the fore end magazine cap once you have that off remove the fore end now on this particular model uh, we have something new where there is a retaining ring seating against the barrel lug itself. Traditionally, you would have the forend riding up against the barrel lug and that magazine cap would keep everything in place. But in this case, we have a retaining ring that needs to come off first. This is side specific. It needs to be oriented properly when putting it back. There is a knurled side that goes against the lug of the barrel when you're replacing it and a smooth side which will go up when you're putting it back over the magazine tube. These things are initially very, very tight to pull apart. Don't be surprised if it really takes some work in getting it to come apart. In that case, it was just easier to set it between my legs and remove it. Once the barrel is off, set that to the side. Next, pull off the gas piston, set that off to the side. From here, what we need to do is remove the operating handle from the bolt. It is very tight against the detent, holding it in place. So what I like to do is move the bolt back with your off hand you can grab the action bar you're going to notice that there is a half moon on the top of the bolt that half moon needs to line up with the center of the operating lever that is where it will come out so once you have that lined up i found it easiest to take a set of pliers around the base with the rag in place to lift up there now that you've pried out the operating lever slowly let the tension off of the action bar and the spring and the bolt and action arm assembly will come off as one you can then remove the bolt off of the top of the action bar. You're gonna to wanna to do that because you're gonna to wanna to remove all of that oil that is in the bolt itself and the action arm. Go ahead and remove 
the action spring from the magazine tube. Go ahead and remove all of the oil from the magazine. If you don't, what's gonna to start to happen is that's gonna add friction to that spring and action bar as it's trying to cycle. And when I get a lot of emails and phone calls from end users saying, hey, I just shot my gun, it's failing to eject and carry in the next shell, the usually the first thing I will ask them is did you totally tear it down and remove all the oil and clean it before putting it back together? The usual response is no, I did not. So if you're having a failure to eject or a failure to feed, typically that is where the issue is. You need to remove all of the oil from the back of the receiver lug for the barrel inside the chamber. I even go one step on any new shotgun. I will take the end piece of a three piece cleaning rod with the appropriate chamber brush, in this case a 12 gauge. Put the brush in the end of that rod, wrap it in one or two cotton patches, put it inside a cordless drill or any drill you might have. Put some metal polish on there. Flitz works perfect if you have that. And what you do is insert that brush into the chamber in here and lightly hone and polish that chamber. When you remove the brush, you will notice that the cotton patch is gonna be jet black. You've removed a lot of the oil and the contaminants that were inside that chamber. And I will usually find that the shell that may have only ejected three or four feet now gets thrown about 15 feet. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, from here, we need to remove the trigger assembly group. There is one pin holding that trigger assembly in place. So I'm gonna take an armor's block, a little punch here, and tap this out. So once that pin is out, set that off to the side, just lift up on the trigger assembly and go ahead and clean all of the oil off of that. There is also a lug for the base of the forend that is also orientation specific. There is an upside to this, which will have a cup in it. That needs to be up when being placed back over the magazine tube. It is really important to get all of the oil out of this receiver here, or once again, you're gonna create a lot of friction when this gun is trying to cycle, and that is usually gonna result in failure to ejects or failure to feeds, okay? Action scrubber is probably the best. Take it outside, give it a quick rinse with action scrubber. In a pinch, if you don't have action scrubber, I have used brake clean before. We're just trying to look to remove all that oil and have something that dries very quickly. Wipe it all down after that. You can use a, a lightly oiled silicone cloth or something like that to then put a light coating of oil back inside really nothing much that needs to be done to the trigger group here. You can do a little brush with some CLP or something like that. So now we're at the point of go ahead and reassembling the shotgun. When you put it back, there is a little arm inside here, which is actually the release for the bolt. So I found it easiest to just stick my finger inside the ejection port, push that back get that trigger group to then fall back into place smoothly. The hole will then line up for that pin. And once you get it started, you can just take the hammer at that point, send it home flush, and now your trigger assembly is good to go. From there, we are going to assemble the forend retaining tube the action spring and then from there the action arm and the bolt assembly this does go on a specific way the bolt and extractor need to be facing forward the orientation then will have 
the spot for the operating lever facing the ejection port on the receiver. So once we have that all lined up, we're just gonna slowly slide this all back in like so. And once again, we just need to line up that half moon for the bolt and the operating lever. Make sure that the concave portion of the operating lever is facing forward, putting that back in. And you will feel it positively click against that detent on the inside. Once you do, safely let off. Do not let that operating lever slam against the front of the receiver. Um, not only are you gonna put a dent in the receiver, but if you do that a few times, I've seen where an operating lever is snapped because of the excessive force going forward. All right, so now we wanna put the gas piston back into place. From here, we can put the barrel on. What I like to do when putting the barrel on, I can set this against my leg, set the stock against my leg, and in my offhand, slowly start pulling back on the operating lever of the bolt because they need to kind of go down in harmony. So when you start that barrel in, start bringing the bolt back until that barrel fully seats. All right, you'll notice that it's tied up against the receiver. There is also a release here that if you've had the bolt back once, and it locked into position and a shell did not kick out of the magazine, it basically does not allow that bolt to lock back. So if you need it to lock back, come back over to the release here and push that down. The shell catch and lifter is going to spring down, allowing you then to come back over and lock that bolt back into position. Once that's there, we're gonna put the retaining ring back on. Like I said, we need to make sure that the knurled side is down against the barrel lug. Thread it down, you only need to go hand tight. Take the end, slide that over. Make sure that the legs or feet on the back side of the end properly seat down inside that lip of the foreign ring that we took apart earlier. Take the magazine cap, go hand tight on that, and that is it. Your gun is back together and ready to fire. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at Legacy Sports. Um, go to LegacySports.com if you need any other product information or like to take a look at our other offerings. Thank you.